Have you ever wondered how you can dream more? Think about the big things you want in life? That's what we'll talk about today. I always count my blessings more than I count my money. I never work for money. Never did. Dolly Parton. Today we're going to talk about the book, Dream More, Celebrate the Dreamer in You, by Dolly Parton. She is a believer in Jesus, and her life points towards Jesus. It's an important part of this book. The story is that she gave a speech in front of a college for graduating, and they made her a doctor, an honorary doctor. So she's Dr. Dolly. And she said that she was nervous. Whenever she gets nervous, she says she looks out at the audience before a concert, before the speech, so that she can see people's eyes. She can see what they look like. And so that makes her feel better about it. Isn't that funny? After all that touring on stage, she still gets nervous. And she loves giving advice. She feels that it's important to give people advice when they're kids so that it'll become a part of their lives. So in this book, she gave that speech, but then she sat back and thought about the advice she was giving, and she wanted to say more things. This is a very short book. I think in Audible, it's only about an hour and a half long, but it's well worth the listen to see someone who is relentlessly positive. So I like this book. I think the fact that she points to God, that it's her being, that she wants to help children, is just something worth admiring. She says in this book that she hopes that we will dream a little more, learn a little more, care for everyone and everything, and then be more. That will make us, she says, a star in all of us. Even if we don't want to be a star, there is something in us that will make us a star in what it is we're meant to do. That doesn't necessarily mean singing like she did or movies, but if we keep faith, if we don't get distracted, we'll be able to start having the faith and love and trust to see how we're blessed. We can work hard. She says she's even a little bit lucky. And then God lets us into that dream and helps us get there. She says that when she was a small kid, she used to perform for the chickens. She imagined it was her audience and she was putting on a show for them. It taught her how to be a performer in front of real people. But she says the unfortunate thing is sometimes people keep their dreams quiet, like their dreams are bad. They don't tell other people, or maybe they think they're foolish. I think a lot of times when people have a dream and they tell other people they're afraid, they're going to get laughed at. They're going to get mocked or something like that. But she says that we should have our dreams and we shouldn't be so ashamed of them. She said that dreams and wishes are a little bit different. Dreams are where you work hard, you pay the price, you do the thing, you have that fire to make your dreams come true. Wishes are more like hopes. Gee, I hope I have money someday. Or, or gee, I hope there's my favorite bread at the grocery store. It's not powerful. It's not about acting. It's about doing the things we want. She says it's all attitude. But that too, she says that we also have to thank God for failures in life. She says she does that because the failures taught her something. And she wants to know what lesson God is trying to teach her. When she wants to know, maybe she's gone the wrong way, or maybe she should persevere some more. But she says that slap in the face of failure is God pointing out to us some lesson maybe we don't want to hear, but he wants to make sure that we don't do it again. But in the end, we should take a look at what went right and what went wrong when we do have failures and know next where to go. And if we become bitter about whatever failure we had, we have to let it go. She said, we want to wear out, not rust out, which means we want to go at our life in full force and not just sit there like a junkyard car rusting in the backyard. We want to go out on stage, whatever that stage is for us. She says in the end, when we learn, we'll know how to do everything better. She says that reading is everything to her. 
and that she reads books for two different viewpoints. She tries to absorb what the book is about and what it's trying to tell her, but then she tries to absorb the creativity in the book because it'll help her be creative. I remember I read this book once, and I'm not that much of a fiction reader, or I'm not that interested in fiction books, but this book, The Historian, was interesting. But the thing that really impressed me about it was how well the sentences were put together. This wasn't my kind of book for sure. But you know what? Her writing was so good, it made me take notice. And it tried to encourage me and show me ways of how I could be a better writer. And I remember in that book, she produced a sentence that said 50 different things. It was amazing. It was this woman walking down the stairs. And from that one sentence, you could understand everything that just happened. thought that was amazing. I never write a sentence like that. But that's what she tries to do. And I saw that, that she also looks for books to help her be more creative. Being a songwriter, being a singer, being an actress, all creative. And I think the other part that I liked about this book was the fact that I felt I pulled myself out of my own situation by reading books where I had no help, where I didn't know where to turn. Books showed me the way. They showed me how to get out of certain circumstances. And that's what it struck me with her. She grew up very poor, but she knew books were her way out. And she says in the end, that was a thing that impressed her dad more than anything she did is that she was giving books to children and that she was known as someone who gave books to children. To her dad, that was the thing that was the most important. But when we look at books, we want to learn. We want to know how to live our lives. But she says we also have to have good common sense. We can read as many books as we want. But if we don't have what she calls horse sense, we're going to fall astray. We're going to struggle because common sense is what's going to keep us on the right path. It's going to help us do the right things. And when we don't have a specific learning that we have, it's going to help us understand the situation, even if we've never been in this situation or we don't know much about it but that when she get, grew up poor, that horse sense helped give her the right path. And now she tries to have a very strong work ethic, a good energy, and she tries to do the right thing. Her giving books to kids is the most important thing. But she also wants you to know that she doesn't call poor kids out because she remembers when she was given things because she was poor, it made her feel bad. She knew she was getting something because something wasn't quite right. So she makes sure that she gives books to all the kids and so that nobody feels called out, better or worse, for being poor, being rich, or whatever you are. All kids get the books. She said that she was blessed with the ability not to have to sleep much and that she can take power naps. But in the end, having that strong work ethic, having that energy and the horse sense, is a lot about what makes her succeed. She says happiness is about energy. It's about the things that you appreciate in your life, good and small. She says that in the end, that life isn't all good or isn't all bad. It is about what we look at in life, about loving ourselves, loving other people. And success is about keeping a spiritual grip. Pray for understanding, she says. Pray to be accepted. And that when we feel loved, when we feel joy, when we feel God's presence, we'll be happy. And our happiness will give happiness to other people. It fixes anger. It fixes misery. And our love will forgive. Our love will produce more love. She said that when we have problems, that we should take inventory. She said we should look at what's going on and consider what it is we should do about keep going and how we can keep being positive. In the end, she says, life is messy. And the best thing that we can do to get away from the mess is to move, 
is to do something, is to keep going. She says that times when she's feeling down or feeling lost or losing her positivity, she rereads a passage that is meaningful to her. She takes a trinket or what she calls a treasure and holds it for a while. You know, maybe it's a treasured photo or something someone gave to her. Tries to go in her walk in her favorite place out in nature because she needs to be reminded that life is good. And even if this is a down moment, it will help. And in the end, too, writing helps her. Again, she's an amazing songwriter. A lot of her songs, I think all of her songs, have to do with life events that happen to her, and they all have meaning. You know, sometimes I always wondered that. Do singers write just about their experiences or what they think will make a good song? Or do you write songs to give people a specific meaning? I'm pretty sure that's what she does, because in each chapter of this book, if you listen to the audiobook, she sings a song that's relevant to the part where she's talking about in the book. And she says that when you are able to come out and write things down, it will help you understand other people. It will help you realize that you're not going to be happy all the time, but it takes work. And it reminds you there's still good in the world. It says it takes energy to be miserable. It takes energy to be happy too. So we should be working towards being happy. Because when someone steals your happiness, steals your joy, it saps your energy too and your positivity. But she says that we should avoid what she calls energy vampires. Those are the people who steal our joy. And we should expect something better. Do our homework and take our chances so that we can help people in life and do the thing that's going to help us get to our dreams. These energy vampires only steal from us instead of giving us what we need to get our dreams. I'm sure in the music industry, there are a ton of people who will tell you anything to get you to come to their side, get, have you be produced by them, or have you walk away from your spouse or anything. These are people to avoid not people to get closer to. She said that it's important that we care more for other people. She said that she would say something to her mother, I don't care. She said something like, I did not put you on this planet just to suck up air, that we are meant to care and meant to care about other people. And so we have to do that. But she said that caring for other people is not about preaching to them, but how can we motivate people to do better? She says you just can't go around smacking people upside the head. I like that. It's kind of funny, but no, you cannot. You can't preach to people. It just bounces right off of them. You can't force kids to care about other things and other people. And when we get preached at or yelled at, it doesn't feel good. And she says it really doesn't help us overcome things. But instead, what she does is she tries to sing and use words and encourage them in the right direction. Obviously, most of us are not Dolly Parton. So we're going to struggle to encourage them by singing. I would mostly frighten people away with my singing. But there's other gifts and talents we have that we can help others make better choices, feel better, and go the right direction. She says it's important that we stay committed to each other. She talks about her and Carl, her husband, and they have been committed to each other. That means that when something's wrong, they fix it. When they have struggles, they work through it. They're careful about who they hang around with. And they know that there are dangers out there and that the ego is danger and misery is a danger and unhappiness. But because of their commitment to each other, not just a, we got married, we're super committed, but this deep commitment that we will work through anything that happens to us is what kept her and Carl married all these years. And she says she is a one-man woman, that there is no other man for her because they are committed to each other. I thought that was so great. She said that once we start learning to trust other people, it leads to respect, even if we don't agree with other people. And that's how we have to do it, is that we have to win over people 
And she says, I might walk with you, I might walk over you, but I'll never walk on you. So she's never going to go out and hurt people, but she's also not going to let people stand in her way. I thought that was such a forceful statement that not one person on this planet is a mistake. God created every single person on this planet. We are all someone that God loves. We all are someone that God cares about, and so we should care about them too. She says in the end that everybody's a star in their own dreams, which I thought was an interesting take on the whole situation. You know, we've told people, you know, everyone talks about the special snowflake thing where everyone is special and everyone's amazing. And I think the message in that isn't entirely wrong. Everyone is special. Everyone is loved by God. Everyone is important to God. And everyone has gifts and talents that God gave them. And they want to use those gifts and talent to star in their own dreams. And we should give people room to do that. I think where we go wrong is we tell people that they can do anything they want. They can do anything they put their mind to. They can be anything they want to. And that's not necessarily true. But instead, she's putting it in context. Everybody is someone that is loved. And once we start doing that and treating people like they're loved by God, we have that presence. We get rid of our self-righteousness, our self-serving, our wanting to judge other people or make excuses for other people. And instead, we treat them as God wants to treat them, as loved beings. She says that God, too, sought out quietness and solitude. It's important in the day to get to hear God's voice and do so in quiet. She says that she likes to do that in the morning by going for a walk. She said that God doesn't really set uh, bushes on fire in the same way he used to. So we have to look for what she says, God clues. Be a seeker, not an angel. We're not going to be perfect, but instead We're trying to gain positive energy, and love is the best kind of energy. She said that she wants to shine God's light on other people and look for the light. And she says you have to work for the light to get to that type of place. So many people around us, including ourselves, need confidence. We try to get closer to other people. We're trying to get closer to God. And she says that there are times in her life where she understands who the real her is in her heart. And she says it makes her mad, sad, and glad. But that doesn't mean that her positivity goes away, that her positivity is lessened because of the way that the world is or because of who her true self is. She said that there are angels that there have been people who have been angels in her own life, and that she likes to be there for other people. She likes to bring that light, that reflection of light to other people. So this book is wonderful. She's a wonderful person who tries to show that type of positivity and energy in her life. And everywhere she goes, she's trying to bring people to a more positive place. It may be that you don't agree with her on every single theological issue that's out there. I mean, honestly, who do we agree with every theological issue out there? But what you can agree is that she's trying to be a force of good, a force of working hard, of going for your dreams, but then shining the light of God on other people. I listened to someone once talk about her as a musician, and I guess that she writes songs anywhere. They said that they had lunch with her once and She walked into the bathroom and then came out again, and Dolly was there, and she goes, well, what are you doing? And she goes, oh, I just wrote a song. They said that she is like Mozart, where she sees music. She is a prodigy for our modern time. And there's not many times where you can see a Mozart in our living world and someone who takes that gift and tries to shine it towards God. It's a real amazing skill and ability. So my challenge to you, how can you find ways to be the star of your own dreams by taking the gifts that God gave you and using them 
to shine the light on other people? Is there something that you could be doing that would help you help other people more in your life? All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast and tell a friend that being the star in your own dreams starts with small steps. 